here's the scenario. So we have a fictitious event that we're calling our Marketing 101 Bootcamp. And we're using the event management area of Dynamics to basically set up that event and track our registrants that they are gonna eventually attend this event. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the event management area of Dynamics Marketing, but I just want you to know that we're using that in this example here today as part of our journey. So we created this Marketing 101 Bootcamp event. And then what we wanna do is we want to then basically invite a group of people to attend this Marketing 101 Bootcamp. So those could be contacts and leads in our system that we would invite. And I'll show you this here in just a minute. Um, so we'll create a, a segment list of people that we want to invite. And then what we will do is create then the different emails that we're gonna need to handle that journey. So there'll be an invitation email. There might be a thank you for registering email. There might be like a second chance registration email that we might put out. And then finally, we have an email that maybe the day before the event, for those people that did register, we wanna send a reminder about the event that's happening the next day. So those are the different emails that we would potentially need for our journey. And then the final thing that I'll jump into is the actual journey itself. That's kind of the foundational piece of Dynamics Marketing. Um, that's gonna basically, we're gonna design all those things that I just talked about. We're gonna invite our attendees. We're gonna track who registered. We're gonna send those thank yous for those that did register, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the scenario that we're gonna walk through here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and do that. So I'm actually gonna start at the beginning, which would be a segment. So again, the three things we're gonna talk about segments, making a marketing email or multiple marketing emails, and then the journey itself. But it all starts with a segment of people. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go into segments here. And you can have as many segments defined as you want or need. Um, Jessica talked a little bit about these in her part of the presentation. But segments can be dynamic or they can be static. You see this column right here. So a static list is we're gonna put known leads or contacts on that list. We can add and remove people from that list. But once that list is set, it's those people. Uh, just by adding a new contact or lead in the system is not gonna add them to the segment list. We have to maintain that list manually. So that's a static segment list. A dynamic list is the opposite. We're gonna basically build a query or a definition of here's the people that should meet the criteria to be on the list. So that way, if a new contact or a new lead got created tomorrow and they meet the criteria, they would automatically be added to that marketing segment list. If you're familiar with just marketing list in regular dynamics, um, it's very similar to that. A lot more powerful, but similar to that. We're just basically trying to define groups of people that we want to market to. So let me go ahead and just pop into one of these and show you kind of how they're built. So this is our segment list or a version of our segment list that we used for our Marketing 101 Bootcamp invitation. They can be pretty simple. So this is a dynamic list. Okay, so I'm not making a static list of known people. It's a dynamic list. And then what you're basically gonna do is build your query down here. Um, you can start by adding what's called a query block. And that's what you see on the screen right here. Um, so for example, I'm inviting a group of known contacts that are already in my dynamic system. And what I'm basically doing is I'm looking at the job title field on the contact. And if that contains the word marketing, those are the people that I'm inviting. So we did a pretty basic example. Again, this is just a demo environment here, but that could be anybody that's a VP of marketing, a marketing coordinator, any contact that has the word marketing in their job title, we're trying to grab those people and include them on this list. I will just go ahead and pull this down here, but you can see all of the fields here are things that you would see on a contact. So you can gra grab any data element or attribute and, and filter that in a certain way. You can also, and this is where it becomes really exciting, but you can also add a related entity here. So I could go ahead and add a related entity, for example, their account or their company that they work for. Okay, so I could grab a related account and pull any data related to their company. Um, you can see there's other data in here related to marketing, like 
if they checked into a previous event that we've had. Um, I can include some data about that. And then you can go multiple levels deep. So for example, if I did add the account, and then that account might be related to, let's say, orders or invoices or cases in the system. I could then drill down and look at, let's say, those orders or invoices, and then even from those invoices, drill down into the products that were on those invoices, and maybe I'm interested in coming up with contacts that work for these companies that had an invoice where product ABC was on it, or maybe product line ABC was on it. So maybe I'm marketing to a very specific people of that have purchased a certain product or product family from us um, in our system. Of course, it's all relying on the data being there in Dynamics, but I'm just trying to give you an example of doing some pretty elaborate marketing segmentation with, with using this uh, query block. The other thing that we can do in here is do what's called an, a behavior block. So I'm just gonna pop into one real quick just to show you the list here. But a behavior block would be like, yeah, I'm trying to grab those marketing contacts, but only those that maybe opened a certain email that we sent in the past, um, or maybe that we sent an email in the past. There's lots of choices here. Those are gonna be the common ones. But here you see emails opened, people that maybe have registered for previous events. Those are the kind of behavior things that we could check against to again, include, try to come up with a list of contacts or leads that we want to include in this segment list. So again, for this particular one, we just are working specifically with a query block that is trying to grab contacts in our system where they have the word marketing in their job title. All right, once we go, um, once we have this list kind of ready, um, we would save it, of course, you can check for errors. And then what you do is you go live with the list. Once we go live with that list, that'll then actually show us the members that meet this criteria. So this is just a copy of our list here. Let me just pop into our real segment list that we did in our real journey that I'll be showing you here coming up. And you'll see here that um, this one's live, so I cannot edit it. If I need to edit it, I need to click this edit button or stop it from going live. But I'm not gonna do that here today. But what I do wanna do is just click on this members tab here and you can see this is showing us the members that meet the criteria of our marketing list. So it looks like today at this point in time, there's 10 members that are on this marketing list, okay? Tomorrow, if we add a new contact in the system and they have the word marketing in their job title, I would have 11 members in my marketing list. So that's the customer or the segmentation of Dynamics Marketing. So now we've got our group of people defined I now wanna start creating those emails that we'll use to send to these groups of people. So I'm gonna to go to uh, navigate on the left-hand side here and go down to marketing emails. So the first thing I wanna point out, if I were to do a new one here and just click new, you'll see that it's gonna come up and ask me um, if I wanna use a template. So you can have, there's some predefined templates that come with Dynamics Marketing, but you can also create your own templates so once you kind of maybe get your style created, you can actually take one of your existing emails and make that into a template. Um, so you can have your own templates in here. So it makes it easy just to get started. I'm gonna show you an existing one though. So I'm, let me go and just back up here and jump back into my marketing emails. And we will show you this one here. So this is just a copy of the invitation that I created to actually send to those groups of 10 contacts to invite them to our Marketing 101 Bootcamp. So this is the actual email creation tool here. So it is a, uh, a graphical tool. So it's a drag and drop utility um, where you on the right hand side see the different elements or components that I can put on my email. So I'll just kind of scroll down here to see, show you what this particular email looks like. So you can see we've got images on here. We've got the date and time of our actual event here. Um, we've got some buttons where they can click the register now button, which will, will take them to a marketing form that they can go in and register for the event and click submit. So we've got all kinds of features that we can do on here. If I wanted to add, a, let's just say another button, I can just click on this button and then drag and drop and you'll see the different areas that I can drop this into. Um, so I can put it like right above this text box here 
and it'll drop a button on there. Then I can come over here and define what that button would say, or I should say what link that button would take them to, whether it be our marketing form so that they can register or maybe some other piece of information. So you're gonna design your email and save it. And then what you can do is you can preview or go to the preview and test tab here. And then you can actually view your email in different versions or different device settings here. So how would it look in a desktop email? How would it look if they went to um, a mobile phone in portrait mode? This is what that would look like. What would happen if they flipped their phone to mobile landscape? What would it look like then? So you get a nice preview of what that email might look like. And then from here, you can also do a test send. So if I were to click this, I can basically define an email address or two, like you can separate that by a comma, you can do as many as you want, but you can actually just send this email out to uh, some known email addresses and actually get the email and see what it looks like before we're ready to actually kind of commit to this particular email. So once we kind of have the email defined, we've tested it all out, we would then again go live with it. So think of go live as almost like publishing this email. This email now is ready to use on a marketing journey which is what I'm gonna show you next. So we did define several emails for our marketing journey that I'm gonna be showing you next. Um, so again, we did an invitation to the event. We did a registration thank you email. We then did a, um, a last chance for those people that didn't register, we give them a last, last chance to register email. And then for those that did register um, the day before the actual event, we send them an email to remind them that they have a boot camp event coming up tomorrow. Okay, so again, our event is scheduled for November 1st. And so we've already sent the invitations out last week. Some people have already registered, some people haven't yet. And that you're gonna see all of that in the customer journey. Let me first show you how we created the journey. So we've got our emails all created here. They're all live. And now I'm going to the customer journey. I'm first just gonna show you a copy of our customer journey in draft mode. So I can just show you what the journey is going to do, um, how we built the journey. I'll also show you how you can add new steps to the journey and so on. So let me just go ahead and pop into this copy of our existing live journey. And you can see here, it's kind of a drag and drop visual editor here as well. So it always starts with a segment. And by the way, if I were to click new, if I were starting a new journey, it's gonna give me that list of templates that Jessica showed us um, in her PowerPoint presentation. So you can choose from an existing template. And there is an event journey that's already out there, which is actually what we started with. And then we just kind of tweaked it and modified it a little bit. But all journeys start with a, you know, who are we marketing to? What segment of people are we marketing to? So if I click in there, you can see we're marketing to a marketing segment and the segment that we're marketing to is that marketing 101 boot camp, that segment list that I showed you a few minutes ago. Now you can have multiple segments of people that we're trying to market to. You can also market to not necessarily a segment of people, but maybe people that visit your webpage. We're gonna do something with those people and take them through a journey. So we're not necessarily defining a segment in that example, we're just, basing on an event that maybe happened. Um, and then the other thing you can do, and I really didn't talk about this yet, but you can also create what's called subscription lists. So subscription lists are a way to kind of maintain your opt-ins and opt-outs, right? So you might have a subscription list for those people that want to receive your monthly newsletter. That would probably be a subscription list. So if this journey that we're creating was a, your monthly newsletter email, we'd probably be having a subscription list here instead of a segment of people that I showed you earlier. But for this one, we had defined those people that had the word marketing in their job title, and those are the people that we're going to invite. The next step in our journey is we're gonna send an email, and that's gonna be that, uh, that marketing bootcamp 101 invitation email that I just got done showing you. Okay, so that email is gonna go out. Then the next step in the journey is we're gonna check and see if they registered. So in this particular step, this is actually an if then step, but we're checking to see if they register for the event. You notice here that I, you can set a parameter of how long do you wanna wait 
before we decide, yes, they registered or no, they didn't. That might be a couple of weeks. Um, it might be not. So basically, how long do we want to give them initially before we, we uh, do something else with them, right? So because this was just a test one and we didn't want to wait a couple of weeks, we actually just set it up for two hours. So they had to register within two hours of getting that email for them to move on to the next step. Okay, so if they registered within that two hour window, they're gonna go down this yes path. And if they didn't register in that two hour window, they're gonna go down this no path. Okay, so let's look at the yes path really quick here. So on the yes path, um, you'll notice here that they're going to wait, we just wait for an hour. So we just told it to wait for an hour. And then after that hour, we send them a thank you for registering. Once that email goes out, then we're telling it to wait until a very specific date, October 31st, which is the day before the event. And once that date hits, we then send that reminder that, hey, you got your boot camp coming tomorrow. If they, if they did not register, we then basically come down here and then check to see, did they at least open the email? And if they did that, we then wait, we waited till a specific date again, till October 8th, which has already happened. Um, and then we sent that last chance reminder email to get them to try to register as a last chance. If they never open the email in my particular journey here, I just ended it here. So if they never open that initial email, um, then I basically ended the journey and, and you're not even gonna send them a last chance invite. So that's how our journey was defined. If I needed to add a new step in here, I can just click any one of these plus signs and you'll see all different kinds of things that you can do in here. So of course you can send an email. We talked about our if then split, if they registered for the event, then um, go down this path, for example. You saw a little bit of our waits. So wait for, might be waiting for a certain period of time, like an hour or two hours. Wait until would be like we put a specific date in here. The other steps that you can do is you can have it create a new lead record. You can launch a LinkedIn campaign. You can run any Dynamics workflow or cloud flow that you might create to do some other data piece inside of Dynamics. You can have it create appointments and phone calls and tasks. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do in here. Super powerful engine here of the customer journey. So that's kind of an overview of what we did. I'm gonna spend the rest of our time here just kind of showing you now the results of our journey. So everything I showed you has been a copy of our journey that we started a week or two ago. Um, but now I wanna show you there's been some results. So we did launch this journey. We went live with it a couple of weeks ago and then 10 emails went out. There was 10 people on our segment list and some of those people registered for the event, some didn't. Um, some of those emails maybe got a hard bounce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the real version of our customer journey. So this is the same one that I just showed you, but this is the live version of it. Okay, so same exact steps that I just got done walking through here. But so if I look at this first step in here of send an email, um, we can see that, yep, it processed 10 emails, okay? If I click on that, I, on the right-hand side here, I get a little bit more information about that particular step in the journey. Okay, yeah, I know 10 emails went out. Looks like only nine of those emails actually got delivered. Of those that got delivered, there was four unique individuals that clicked on that link, of, on any link that was on that email, um, or unique opens. And then there was two unique clicks. So there's two actually links on that email that they could have clicked. In this case, um, two of those were clicked. So again, then there's just a little bit more information on here. The kind of cool feature that you have here is like, if I see that, yeah, four people had that unique open. If I click on this button here, or if I hover over that, you see it says create segment. I can actually create an on the fly marketing segment. So a new segment and just put those people that meet this criteria on there. So it'd be those four people that actually did that unique open of that email. If I wanted to capture them on a whole new, net new um, marketing segment list. So it's kind of a cool feature. So then you see, um, we then, every all 10 of those then went and said, all right, we're gonna wait to see if you registered. And remember we waited two hours. After that two hours, four people 
made it to this step here. So four people registered. So thus four people got the thank you email. So again, if I click on this, it'll tell us how many of those got sent out, how many of them were delivered, how many were unique opens, et cetera. And then what we're doing is then waiting, all four of those then went, we're waiting until October 31st comes. And then when that date comes, those four people will get the email reminder. So four people registered for the event. So that means six people didn't. So if I come down here, six people um, didn't register for the event. Of that, how many actually opened our original invitation email? Well, I can see only one did because of those six, those that opened it would have gone on this yes path. Only one of them opened the email and didn't register for it. Everybody else didn't even open our email invite and they were gonna be down here and their journey has ended. So that's a little bit about the analytics of the journey. I'm gonna click this insights tab. This just gives you a little bit more um, kind of an idea of what's going on with this particular journey. So how many emails were delivered, how many were bounced, et cetera. Let me jump into the uh, marketing email. So this is um, back to the actual emails that went out. And again, we had four emails that went out, but there's gonna be some analytics on the email itself. You might have emails, not in my example here, but you might have some emails that you use over and over. You're using multiple journeys, that's possible. Um, so this will give you kind of an accumulation of all of the interactions that we've had with a particular email. So let me just pop into that email invite here. This is our initial invite that went out. This is a live email. This is one that we're using in our journey. And I'm just gonna click this insights tab. So the designer's kind of locked down. This is a live email. So I'm gonna go to the insights tab here and you'll see you know, some metrics going on about this particular email. So you see that total of 18 were delivered. You're, you're like, well, wait a minute. You just showed us that 10 were delivered. Um, but um, what actually happened is we actually ran through the journey twice with the same email. First one, we didn't like our results, so we actually did a whole new journey and did it again. So we use this email in two different journeys, so it got sent out 20 times. Of that, 18 have got delivered, and there was two hard bounces, okay? And then again, you see how many opens, et cetera. Um, you can kind of get an idea of when those emails went out. So you can kind of see the date and time frame of when those went out. If I then go to delivery here, there's just gonna be more information. So again, what date did we deliver it on? Um, you can see a list of the people that it got delivered to. If I wanna see like who were those failed people, I can click on that and there was some hard bounces. This will show me the two people that it got a hard bounce on. It happened to be the same person. Remember I sent that email out twice. It happened to be the same person that got a hard bounce. And the bounce reason was it's an invalid mailbox. So it's not even a valid email address. One other kind of quick thing I'll show you here under interactions. Um, I can kind of see a timeline of who opened the email and when. Um, again, who opened the email. If I click on the who, who clicked on the links on the email, I can see who those people are. And then one other really cool thing is if I go to links here, it'll show me my email, kind of give me a heat map of which links on my email are people clicking? So this was a link up here. If I hover over that, nobody clicked on that link. That's why it's in blue. But if I scroll down on my email, ooh, I see kind of a red heat map here. So we had a total of five clicks on that one and four of them were unique. So one person probably clicked on this link twice and it looks like nobody clicked on this link. It's kind of cool to see which of our links that we had maybe in our newsletter or something like that are people really click, clicking on. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you, um, it's probably the least exciting, unfortunately, this is probably the most exciting part, but um, if I go back now to the segment, which started it all, and then open up our actual live segment list that we were working with, let me just sort this by the newest ones. Yep, so this is our live segment list. This is where I saw we had 10 members, but there's an insights tab on here as well. So there's not a whole lot of insights when you're talking about a segment list, but what you can see is how, how many people are coming into this list and how many people are leaving this list. Remember, this is a dynamic list. 
as I mentioned earlier, we could add a contact tomorrow that has the word marketing in their job title. And then this graph would go up probably on October 14th, it's gonna go up to 11, right? We could also remove a contact or change their job title and they would be removed from the list. So for, depending on what you're using your segment list for, this information can be very valuable. Like how many people are coming into my marketing list? How many people are leaving my marketing list? Especially if we're basing it on some of those action items like those that maybe opened an email or um, whatever, those that had a certain sales that we've had with a certain product line, that type of thing. So you get insights at all of those levels, whether it's the customer journey, back to the marketing email, or the actual segment list.